Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Magic Owl, a quiet little exploration game with a little bit of a contemplative bent to it. Uh, we're basically just going to be steering an owl around and experiencing the world around us and how we interact with the environment. There's not a whole lot to it, so there's probably going to be a pretty short episode, but I thought this one was worth having a look at, especially because I just real, really enjoy owls, and I think <laughs> that's probably enough for me anyway. So I'm going to look at the instructions real quickly, and then we'll get started. Uh, oh, our cursor is actually a little lens flare. That's cute. <laughs> Use the arrow keys to fly, or press spacebar to move randomly. Explore. We can move randomly. That's not a feature that I'm used to seeing, really, in games. Alright, so we'll hit start, and we should be taken into... Alright, we've already entered the world here. Uh, so there is our owl, who has a bit of, like, a paper craft feel to him a little bit. Reminds me, just at least slightly, of maybe some of the art style of something like Vivian Clark, uh, which you might remember was a very strange, very out-of-the-box game. Uh, this seems to be a little bit different in the art style. It's a little bit rudimentary at times. We've definitely got some layers of things going on, though. As you can see, uh, the pulsing of these objects in the background. We've got these little, like, light beams going on here. Various colors shading over top of each other. Uh, and different textural patterns happening as well. And pretty much everything that you pass over has some kind of an animation to it, which is kind of a cool little trick. Uh, I'm not sure what was causing there was like a storm of... I'm not sure what those are. They look a little bit like seed pods or something. Maybe they're falling stars. Could be anything. Uh, but we're moving around here just enjoying the colors and I think... Oh, this little ball that bounces off the tree here. Uh, I think really one of the main things is, aside from the visuals though, the outstanding audio track here. This is a really soothing, uh, very calm little bit of background music and it seems to be very seamlessly going through a number of little routines based on where it is that I'm going. Uh, and then there's little hits of audio when I reach certain points, like, um, yeah, right there when I cause those lights to flare. That seems to create sort of a crescendo in the music as well, which I think is a very nice effect. And, uh, and then we've got, like, a little chime as the rain starts to come down we pass in front of this uh, dark cloud. Oh, wow. Big lightning bolt happening. That's a kind of a striking animation. <laughs> definitely, really, definitely didn't expect that to happen. What's going on with these little seeds? They seem to flow apart somewhat. The animations seem to be on rather short loops, which feels a little bit unfortunate. I would like it to be, uh, or at least I think it would be kind of a cool effect if some of these animations started to flow into each other, and perhaps you could create uh, some sort of a confluence of different effects happening as you fly across a bunch of things, so maybe the pattern you took across the screen would actually result in sort of a different pattern uh, in total. So it seems like we can go quite a bit down, and there's actually a depth of field effect going on where you can see the stuff in the foreground is quite blurry. And I think that's actually kind of nice. Uh, it's got a little bit like a limbo feeling to it there. And there's some sort of strange gelatinous creatures here. Are those... it looks like a carton of eggs with little fingers coming out of them or something. It's kind of strange. <laughs> Not really sure what to make of some of these things, but I kind of like that. There's a mysterious quality to it. Uh, there's a good use of color. Things seem to catch your attention and pull you across the uh, the different planes that are going on here. And not super happy about the use of, I think this is like generic Photoshop grass texture at the bottom, but that's all right. Uh, you know, there's room for all kinds of different things uh, when you're going for sort of a, a mixed media look to it, like this game seems to be doing. Let's try holding down the space bar for a minute and see what happens when I do that. Oh, the frame rate does not like that. So we're not gonna actually do that. It seemed to have dropped the frame rate in fraps down to about 19. Uh, from a smooth 60 frames per second, so that's not necessarily the best way to go. Uh, we've tried going to the left, we've tried going down. Ooh, this is pretty. What's going on here? I can imagine it would also be very interesting if there were some dynamic lighting effects going on over the art. I'm not sure to what degree that would necessarily be practical, but... I think it could also create some interesting layering effects. And now we're going up into the stars, you'll see some nice parallaxing going on in the background as things start to scale up. And there is the uh, lens flare that was also the star that represented our cursor at the beginning, it looks like. Uh, not as much seems to be going on up in the heavens here uh, as there was with the other stuff, but we still got some, you know, fleeting moments of animations happening. I really like games like this. I mean, they're super simple, there's not a lot to them, uh, but they still feel nice, and they feel like, you know, there's a lot to see, even though there really isn't. I mean, this is kind of a small space, 
uh, the entirety of which I think we could probably traverse in under, you know, two minutes if we wanted to just go from one corner to the next, but I think getting lost in it is part of the experience, and I think it's part of why these things are so enjoyable. Uh, you know, hearkening back to things like Proteus, uh, it's not really about the destination, it's about the journey. So, I mean, the experience is all that we have here. There's no points, there's no score. It said that even right in the readme when you start it up. And I really, I sort of enjoy things that you just don't have to worry or think about accomplishing anything in particular. The experience is what you make of it. And what happened with this little pink cloud here? It seemed like it got stuck there for a second. If you sit in front of it for long enough, does it go up again? Or it just seems to follow? Oh yeah, it follows along with where you go. But only the pink one does that? Ah, it's hard to say. If there were even more dynamic qualities, I think this could be even a little bit more engaging than it is. But as it is, I think it's more about taking in the audio and the visuals and just sort of enjoying uh, being in the moment for a second and just seeing how you can uh, manipulate these environments because I think we've already seen pretty much everything. But still, I feel like I want more. Seems to be the, the common feeling that I have whenever I play games like this. I just always wish that they wouldn't end so soon. It's a very soothing soundtrack. I wouldn't mind having this also on loop. But it seems like the type of thing that you could just let it go on and on and on and on and it would never really get boring. It's always just sort of uh, ambience more so than a soundtrack. And I think there are some hits though that make it a little bit more uh, in the moment for what's being represented here. You know, the fact that some of these sounds actually correlate to what's going on in the environment. It seems like at certain moments, things take control of your owl for just a second. Like right there, I'm not touching anything. So I'm not sure why that happens. But anyway, I think that's about all there is to see, unfortunately, in Magic Owl. I wish there were more, but alas, there is not. So if you'd like to go try this yourself, you can. It's totally free. Uh, there is a download. The link's going to be available right in the description of this video. So if you want to take a little journey with a magical owl like this, you can feel free to do so. And let me know what you think, of course, in the uh, comments, as you always do. Uh, also, as always, I also have my social media links in there, so if you want to check out stuff like my Twitch, my Facebook, my Twitter, or of course, my main site, which is indie-impressions.com, you can feel free and find over 600 other videos that I've done in the series. So feel free to let me know uh, what you think of this one again in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, what you think about specifically these types of games, these contemplative experiential games that are really more uh, about the journey than they are about, you know, actually accomplishing anything particularly uh, I'd love to hear what you think about that type of thing, and if you have any good examples of other games that feel like this to you, that you think I should try for the channel, feel free to let me know that as well. And I guess that will do it for another day, so thank you everyone for watching and for stopping by. Uh, please do uh, feel free to come back again tomorrow. New episodes are every single day, so I will be back again tomorrow, and I hope to see you here, and I hope you have a lovely night. Take care, everyone.